Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you, as is usual. We're going to do a beer for you today that is actually quite popular in the sort of Frankfurt region of Germany, on the western side, just sort of pretty much in the middle if you don't know exactly where it is. But this brewery comes from a little town called Leek, and it's actually only got a population of about 13,000, but it's apparently got a really, really big brewery. So today we're going to have a look at the Privatbrauerei Liecher and take a look at the P Pilsner Premium Beer. And like I say, it's quite a popular beer around around uh, Frankfurt if you like. A lot of pubs will do this beer on draft for you. So as is usual with my beer reviews, I'll take you through a brief history of the brewery and just tell you a little bit about where the beer comes from. As I always say though, just click on this sort of little box that I'm going to put up here and that will take you towards the tasting part of the video. So anyway, the brewery was founded in the year 1854 when Johann Heinrich Ehring, who was an innkeeper's son, founded the Dampfbier Brauerei, which he would later use to supply the Zoom Loven restaurant, or the Lion restaurant, with beer. Now, four years later, and only 15 kilometres away, the Gambrinus Brewery is founded by Christoph Melchior, and then in 1922, these two breweries merged and began to gain some real prominence in the state of Hesse. Now, in 1940, the brewery actually went on to surpass the 100,000 hectolitre mark per annum of brewing, and this was in the year of 1940 to 1941. In the aftermath of the Second World War, the Leek beer ap apparently became very popular amongst the American GIs who were occupying the area, and then it became known as the Army Brewery for a while, and was actually exclusively brewed for the American occupying forces. In 1950, though, the wider population of Hesse actually began to enjoy the Leek beer. Now in 1960 the beer bottles had Ehring Melchior on the bottles and barrels but then in 1971 the brewery used their slogan first from the heart of nature for the very first time and since then the brewery have maintained strict regulations on the raw materials that they use in their beers and that year the annual brewing volume actually reached the 500,000 hectolitre mark for the first time. Now 1981 saw the brewery introduce their Pilsner beer for the first time and they also surpassed the 1 million hectolitre per annum brewing mark and by 19 88, they were actually the top selling brewery in Hesse. Now, since the mid-1990s, the company have also been very proactive in their environmental policies, and that year they were actually awarded with the ISO 9001 certificate, and also the EU Eco Audit certificate that followed that year. And in 1995, they also had their first TV appearance, and this was when the Kingfisher symbol first appeared on their bottles, and you can see the Kingfisher bird there on the labels. But apparently this symbolises the brand value of purity, freshness, and naturalness, or naturality, I guess, as you might want to see. To see it, but they also exceeded the 1.5 million hectolitre per year uh, brewing mark that year also. Now, 1999 saw the company join with the Holstein Brauerei, firming, firming a strong business ties but still maintaining their operational independence. And in 2000, they actually launched their Radler beer. And the following year, they also uh, increased their range with cola beers, lemonades, and other soft drinks, which have grown to, grown to be quite popular in the Frankfurt region over this, uh, the coming years. But the brewery celebrated their 150th anniversary in 2004. And for this, apparently, they had a gimmick campaign where you could buy stamps that had picture of life of Leaker girls on them and if you collected all of them you could redeem a prize from the brewery and they also held a road show that apparently attracted over 60,000 visitors with live music from several famous acts and the company also entered the Bitburger group that year. So they're part of one of the biggest breweries in Germany these days. And 2006 saw the company introduce their wheat beers due to growing popularity in Hesse. And in 2007 they also introduced their alcohol-free varieties. And apparently their isotonic alcohol fry Pilsner has been approved by the Institute of Sports Nutrition as a sport as an ideal sporty beer for the changing room. I've never heard that a uh, sports nutritionist recommending that you drink beer before a game and stuff, but you know each to their own. But more recently they've introduced the alcohol fry Hefeweizens and they've also introduced a grapefruit version of their isotonic beer which was again recommended by the Institute of Sports Nutrition for a sports based diet. Like I say I've never heard of, uh, of sports nutritionists uh, telling you to drink beer before games though but who knows. Um, but just that's your brief history of the Lika Privat Brau, right? Just to list the other beers that you can get from these guys, you get a Doppelbock, the Export, the Lager, the Pilsner Premium, the Oktoberfest, the Original 1854, the Pilsner Natur Troop, Pilsner Premium, Premium, which is this guy here, the Hefeweizen Hell, and also the Weizen Alcohol Fry. 
So let's get on with the tasting of this guy here. I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a proper look at the label. There is actually a lot of condensation on this bottle here. As you can see, this is the Liker, uh, the Liker label, if you like. You can see the Kingfisher, as I mentioned here. It's meant to sort of symbolize the company's uh, values of naturality, freshness, and I can't remember what the other one was. But you can see on the top of the, there's the top label there, and of course the brewery, the bottle cap, if you like, is pretty much just the same. The Kingfisher, Liker, and and also the pill, it says Pilsen on it. So I guess each beer does have its own uh, its own unique bottle cap. And it says just on the bottom here, founded in 1854 with the heart the Hartley with the heart of nature, it says on the top actually if I German translation is like. But let's get this guy open and get on with the tasting. It's a 4.9% Pilsner beer. Bit of a smoky open in there. So let's get it out and into the glass. Just leave a little bit and give it a little swirl. As you can see, typical of the, the sort of macro-based lager or premium beer, if you like, a kind of pale straw colour. If I put my fingers behind it, you can see them through the glass. You've got maybe a two-finger frothy white head there, slightly bumpy as well. If we look at the aroma now, there's actually a lot of kind of grassy and, um, and light malts coming off of this as I shake it up. But yeah, quite a citrusy aroma with this guy kind of a little bit of cereal, quite a, a kind of grainy aroma in fact actually, but interesting nonetheless. It smells really fresh but it's definitely a lot of grassy, grassy and citric character that's coming out of this guy. But there is grainy malt but definitely it's the citrus and grassy character that's, that's sticking out to me in this one. Let's just get the rest of it out and then we can get on with the taste in here. Just watch that it doesn't go crazy. But yeah, as you can see, once the thing's fully poured, you've got over a two finger uh, fr frothy white head on this one, as you can see. Like I mentioned, the citrus and grass is the kind of, or citrus and grassy hops are the main component of this. There is a little bit of malty character underneath it, like I was showing you when I sugared it up there. But yeah, I'll just sniff a little bit of it there. But yeah, definitely a sort of a uh, kind of really just, it smells like a sort of typical macro brewed lager. But let's give it a taste and see how we get on. Hmm. It's actually, the flavour comes and then very kind of quickly goes and it leaves you just with a little earthy aftertaste actually. Yeah, the, the, the kind of flavour it's opening up with, it's definitely a very, very kind of grainy, and it's only slightly bready in fact, it's mainly a kind of grainy, bread, grainy malty character that's coming up there but it very quickly moves to a sort of grassy hop, there's very little time that it, the flavour actually spends on the malt part of the beer, it goes to the hops almost immediately. But yeah, on the, the hoppy side of the beer you're starting to get the sort of citric character, just a, li a lot of citrus and grass there, but it does have this really quite strong underlying earthy flavour to it. And it, it's, it's got quite a long aftertaste of this earthy character, but there is a little bit of hoppy bitterness kind of sitting there too. It, it actually has a really long finish, which is, in my experience, is quite unusual for a macro beer, but it doesn't have a real malt base to it at all. It definitely is more of a hoppy uh, macro beer. And now that I'm actually now that I'm getting a little bit more into it, the you're feeling the malts coming out a little bit more. Maybe when you're sort of just acclimatizing your mouth to this beer or your taste your palate to this beer, you're getting more of the hoppy character coming out first. You're getting I think when you get more into it you are getting a little bit more of the bready character. There is a kind of just an underlying sort of pale a uh, white bready character to it and it does have you know just a little bit of that kind of typical sweetness that you would associate with the, the pale malts that they use in, uh, in lagers but it really does have quite an earthy character to the latter part of the beer that comes in. A lot of grassy and citric mixed in with that, but the real prominent flavour with this guy, I'm sure, is that little bit of earthy character. Yeah, definitely. I would say 
it does have it's definitely an earthy character there's a lot of grass and citrus in there and once your mouth acclimatizes to it in terms of the category of a, a sort of macro brewed pilsner beer it's actually quite nice obviously you don't expect these beers to have the same sort of complex flavors as craft beers but for what it's trying to achieve in terms of being a premium mass produced beer it's actually not bad at all it's a, it's a fairly good effort but yeah it's definitely got just a little a very short it's still I, I would stick with that what I said at the start it definitely does have <coughs> pardon me it definitely does just have a very short malt base that's got a little bit of white bread in it with some some of that sort of cor I know it's a, a cliche if you like with these beers it's got a sort of corny sweetness to it within that very short bready base but it very quickly moves to the grassy hops with citrus flavour but underneath that you definitely do have some sort of darker and earthier hop character to this beer and it's that it's got quite a long finish in fact the flavour that flavour lasts long into the finish and the grassy character is making it it's actually it's a very fresh beer I would say I would say with that it really is a f one of the more fresh uh, macro pilsners that you can get. In terms of the mouthfeel it's definitely light bodied. It's actually got quite a bit of dry character to it as well. Although the flavour of the, you can see with the flavour of the ingredients it definitely is a very sort of fresh beer in that regard. The carbonation is actually very light as well. Yeah definitely agree with that not even an oily character to this one it is quite wet and quite ref and uh, in a way it's quite refreshing but on the tongue it definitely is kind of quite dry at the same time the carbonation is very light overall what i would say about this beer in terms of the mac in terms of the macro beers i've said this in quite a few of my videos the germans do them very well this is quite a nice one in terms of this category of beer i do like it if you're not so much into the macro pills beer you know you uh, you might want to look at different styles and have some of the smaller breweries in germany but for what this beer is actually trying to achieve i think it's fairly good within the category it's um Overall, you might think, oh, it's, it's, not, it's not such a good beer because it's my macro pills, but within what it's trying to do, I would definitely say it's, it's, it's quite good. And the Germans, like I've said before, are the, the sort of masters, if you like, of the mass-produced beer. Some of the other countries that I've found that produce these beers really don't do very nice ones at all. But, you know, give it a try if you, if you want to try something, uh, if you want to try a German mass-produced beer, you're not wanting Bitburger or something like that. Give it a try and see what you think. Check out the brewery website if you are interested in it as well. I hope you've found my thoughts on this beer informative and quite interesting. Like I always say, check out the brewery website and please let me know in the comments section your own thoughts on this beer. But thanks again for watching and please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Help my channel grow and I'll be back soon with more beer reviews. Cheers.